live. Oh, I'm live. Hey, y'all. I'm James Wright, and welcome to my shop. Uh, we are going to be doing another live today talking about how to sharpen chisels. We're going to be looking at the big Mondo chisels all the way down to the chisels. The Jamesy chisels and the Sarah chisels. <laughs> ah, so lots of fun to come. Uh, this is one of these skills that seems very basic, and for the most part it is. But there are lots of different things that come into it and so many different questions. So I don't want to answer a lot of those and uh, hopefully get these uh, sharp and show you what all goes into that. But um, a couple things we have notifications. Uh, those of you wanting to know about Sarah's mom, uh, what, did you want to give the update? Sure, I can give the update. She has safely been delivered to rehab. So we are out of the hospital. Yay! And much, much, much closer to home. <laughs> so Sarah does not have to drive two and a half hours every day. Um, so hopefully one to two weeks and then she'll probably have a small stay with us before going back to live with her sister. Her life will slow down for a little bit, but, uh, yeah, finally. <laughs> as long as coronavirus doesn't pick up back up. <laughs> I go from She's going back, back to, to the hospital, so but my hospital. Who knows? Uh-oh, mic issues. Mic issues? Mine or yours? I don't know. Alan, who's mic issues? Yeah, if you can tell us. Check um, your mic. Microphone, Sarah. Oh, is mine too far away? Um, no, I had to change some settings in that one. The first dial. James's mic seems off. Yeah, and I got a brand new mic on me, too. So let's fix this before we go on a little farther. Um, a couple other things happening right now. They're saying your mic isn't on. My mic isn't on at all? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. My mic is on. And I'm getting settings. It's saying it's working. Is it not working? Okay. Is it? Oh, it's on. Yeah. I'm not say. Mic level Hello. is low. Uh, okay, let me fix this out because I just got new mics, so hopefully this will make things better. But And video and sound are better. out of sync. So that might be a uh, transmission issue on your end. Um, okay, let me switch back to the old mic and that might make things better until I figure out this new one. The new one is a much, much better mic. But, uh, of course, with new things... Unfortunately, due to the setup, the only way I can possibly test it is to oh, oh, drop it on the floor. That's and, so uh, sad. <sighs> Thankfully, it's a metal case, so it should last a little better. Nope, it's not on James. Well, I haven't turned it on what? yet. Huh? That sounded louder and video sounded, so you must have picked okay, it up. Okay, let's be mic. trying this one now because... Did yeah, you... right, we're good on that one. I know I'm getting sound on this one. Hey, did you go back to the old one? Yeah, this is the old one. So, um, so a couple things happening. Um, I did get... Let me bring this up by me rather than up by my rear end. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you take you, the camera out? You don't want to be smelling I'm that. so glad I'm not wearing my PJ pants tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... I did finally get back in card scrapers. So those are back in stock for everyone who's been asking. And I pointed the camera the wrong direction. Um, no, it's pointing the right way. Well, no, it's over on the far side. Oh. Gonna... Back there, so. Um, so for those of you asking, I did get new card scrapers in. Uh, so those are back in stock. And also this time, uh, we are offering some seconds. There are some card scrapers that are not quite up to snuff either they were labeled wrong there's some scratches and things like that but they're still just the exact same card scraper working the exact same way um, but at a greatly reduced price so if you're interested in those we only have a few of them um, but they are up on the website um, also we finally have straps back in stock now too uh, so those of you who've been waiting for the horse butt straps we have those back and um, like that i'm also offering the seconds and thirds but this time i had a lot of people asking me for scraps um, so i'm now offering um, scraps as well for basically nothing um, so if you want scraps we have horse butt scraps you can buy so uh, yeah those are on the, uh, the website links down below thanks to everyone purchasing for helping out the channel and uh, lots of things going on so woo -hoo, fun and I am looking at making shirts because I've had a lot of people asking about that because I'm like the only YouTube channel that doesn't have shirts other than the Teespring things you can get um, through YouTube but yeah okay let's talk about chisels that's what we're all here for so let's actually look at um, working on chisels. Now, um, the most common one is the half inch. And so we're going to show a lot of the stuff in this, but then I want to show some of the differences between that and you doing a large, like this is an inch and a half, or all the way down to the eighth inch chisel. Um, a lot of people have difficulties with the fine, um, small chisels and getting a good bevel on that. So I want to show some tips and tricks on that. Um, 
But first, what exactly is an edge? And this is one of these things that once you understand what a chisel edge is and different types and different scenarios, pretty much every tool in the shop is just a jig for holding a chisel. Once you understand how this edge works, then you can understand how a table saw works. You can understand how you know, the plane works. You can understand how a file works because they're all basically just a chisel. Um, even a card scraper is just a micro chisel on the edge of the, uh, the burr there. Uh, but I want to expl explain the edge here a bit. And uh, if you hear sudden loud slaps or bangs, it's because my shop is inundated with uh, flies at the moment. And it's driving me bonkers. Uh-oh. My settings are off. Oh, life is fun. All right, I gotta fix this. No, life is a highway. <laughs> <laughs> Let <Yes>. it begin. <laughs> and uh, if you want to see early shots on the... Um, Oh, there we go. Early shots on the uh, the t-shirts. We've been doing some dad joke things in that. So we've been having fun with that on the hive mind. So if anyone doesn't follow the hive mind, um, it's the YouTube group for Wood by Right. So we have the YouTube page that anyone can see. But the hive mind is, is kind of the place where I bounce ideas off of people. And other people can show what they're working on and ask questions. Uh, but if you go to YouTube, uh, Facebook and you type in uh, Wood by Right hive mind, you'll come up on there. So let's switch over to this and show some of what we got here. So I'm going to take this chisel, turn it up on its edge, and actually I'm going to grab a straight edge just to make it a little bit cleaner. If I have a straight edge, there we got a straight edge. And so let's draw our chisel edge. And then we want to put a degree on there, so let's put something like a 30 degree bevel on there. And then we're going to draw the back side, or the, the top side of the chisel. So if we imagine that being our, our chisel shape, let me get this a little bit closer and cleaner. There we go. So if you imagine this our chisel shape, basically all we're doing is we're bringing this point down to an infinitely small point. And look, there's a fly. Uh, <laughs> there's literally like 70, 75 of them in here right now. Um, and so we want to we want to take material off of this face. And one time we want to take material off of this face. So if we just continuously take material off of this face, the bevel here, we can slowly bring this bevel back. And every time we bring the bevel back a little bit better, a little bit farther, we'll get a new edge, a new cane point right here on the very, very tip. <laughs> and so that's what we're trying to do is get that point incredibly sharp. Now there's a bunch of different ways of doing that. Um, one of the ways is you can put a secondary bevel on it. So the problem is if you're going to be taking this whole face off the bevel, um, you're going to be taking off a lot of material every time. So if I were to come in here and I plane off an angle like that right on the tip. So let me actually draw a couple more of these to show you what I'm talking about here. Um, what we can do is put a secondary bevel on there so we're not going to be planing quite as much at any given time. The problem with that is that secondary bevel is going to be a steeper bevel than the original one. And so this will be a bit exaggerated in its actual size, but if you get really close to the chisel, the secondary bevel is going to look something like that and have this bevel right here. And the nice thing about that is you're only having to remove that little bit of material rather than removing all of this bevel. The problem with that is the next time you come back and sharpen, you're going to be removing a little bit more material. And the next time is a little bit more material, and then a little bit more material, and a little bit more material until you're right back here at the primary bevel being that new thickness. And so what you then have to do is come back here and create a new primary bevel with a new um, secondary bevel on there. And then you can sharpen that one again and again and again and again. Um, so this basically saves you time on all of your regular sharpenings, but will cost you a lot of time when it comes time to putting a new primary bevel on there. And there's a bunch of different ways around that. Um, but that's the, the standard idea of putting a, uh, a secondary bevel on there. The other way is to put a back bevel on there. And this is fairly common for, um, let me do it like this. You have some super chats, by the way. Oh, I do? Yeah. What do we got? Well, we Alan decided to donate to your funds for fly spray. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve Combs says thank you. Well, thank you, guys. Do you have a mom joke? I have a mom joke. Okay. What you got? A Spanish magician tells the audience he will disappear on the count of three. 
He says, uno, dos, and then poof, he disappeared without a trace. <laughs> I like that one. I know you do. <laughs> I was thinking about doing the dad joke woodworking. How about the mom joke woodworking? Mom, mom, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that one. Cool. Uh, oh, secondary bevel, uh, back bevel. So the other thing you can do is rather than putting a secondary bevel on the bevel side, you can put that secondary bevel, just a little bevel, right here on the main side. And so what that does is this guarantees you get a really nice clean tip every time. Because if the back of your chisel, this area here, gets contaminated, then once that bevel starts working its way back towards that contaminated area, then that edge, right, the contamination is going to be bad. But if you put a secondary bevel on there, then your edge will be great. Uh, it will be, will be perfect every time. And this is great for, uh, for planes because on a plane, well, most bevel down planes, this is the bottom side of the plane. This is what is, is going underneath the wood. And the wood will then impact here. Whereas with a chisel, the wood comes and impacts here. And so with a chisel, you don't want to have this back bevel on there because if you're going to be using this as a reference surface, and reference surface, um, then you're going to have this little edge here and you can't plane perfectly flat. So generally, most of the time with chisels, you don't want to put a back bevel on there. But a lot of people do like putting a secondary bevel in here. So I wanted to show you this just because I'll be using some of these terms here um, and know that there's a difference between a back bevel and a secondary bevel. They're basically the exact same thing. It just depends on which side they're on. The secondary bevel goes on the bevel side. The back bevel goes on the back side. So as clear as mud. Um, <laughs> um, so what do I do? I do not do a secondary bevel. I do not do a back bevel. I don't do anything other than the primary bevel. And the reason I do that is it's just simple. Uh, it's easy just to do one side and be done. It's, it, it's one less step you have to think about. Um, and so for that, I find it to be a little bit easier to, to maintain the bevel, keeping it at that. Um, but there's a lot of other people out there who do it very, very differently. Um, I know many good woodworkers who do love that secondary bevel and they'll put it on there all the time. Um, particularly with planes, I know a lot of people like to do the back bevel, uh, particularly Rob Cosman with the, uh, um, the, the ruler trick. Um, he loves that thing. Um, it's just, it's one more step, and so it's something I don't like to do, and so I'm going to be showing you today without that. Ooh, good birch. Belch. Mmm, <laughs> good birch. <laughs> ah, that's a woodworking joke for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, uh, this is a little bit high for me normally sharpening. Normally I'm going to do it over there, but it's not very good to have the cameras and me over here doing it. Um, I like my bench to be down at, uh, eh, about there. Um, so if I were to put my hand flat down, I like that to be about the height that I want my, my sharpening at. And so I have to do a little bit different to hold it up here, but I'm going to be talking through that. Um, let me bring this in here. Also on these, I am using uh, DMT um, diamond plates and I have links to them down below if you want to see the exact ones I'm using. These are incredibly fast. They are pretty much the fastest way to remove material is with a diamond. Um, they stay flat, so I don't have to worry about flattening like a wood with leadstones. They last incredibly long, and they're just all around really, really good stones. And so that's why I use these. So I have my coarse, my fine, my extra fine, and my strop. Um, and I have many videos on making this, and uh, it's just a really, really good system. Actually, I think I first saw this from Paul Sellers. He had one without the strop, um, and I really like the system. And so I was like, yes, but I want the strop on there too. Um, so I use Windex on mine, just one little squirt per each one, and we can go to town. Put some Windex on it. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> what we can do here is I'm going to take my chisel and I'm going to hold it with my fingers underneath, all four fingers underneath, grab it around, and then I bring up my index finger and point forward. And so my index finger is what's putting pressure down on the blade, and then my other fingers are supporting it up. And they're not like grabbing it. I'm just letting them rest on, the, rest on the, the wood like that. So we're just lightly holding it like that. I'm going to set it on here at about a 45 degree angle to the plate, not going straight across, not going at 90 degrees to it. 
actually do it on this one a little bit better. Yeah, it's out of focus that really well too. There we go, that's better. So about 45 degrees or so, and I'm gonna lift it up until I feel it just pop. And that pop is that bevel going flat onto the surface here. And some people that's really hard to tell. And on a lot of my chisels that I've done it quite a bit, there really isn't a bevel there. It's, it's slightly rounded because of doing it by hand over time. But I'm gonna put it on there, feel that angle, and then I'm going to rock back and forth. And I wanna show you this with my feet if I can. Let's see if I can get my camera over here. Yes, all the uh, BLO rags on the floor is doing finishing today. And what I want you to see here is a lot of people immediately try doing this with their arms. And what I try, what I tell people to do is lock your arms, lock your elbows, lock them to your body and move at the ankles or knees. And this way you can make sure you're maintaining the angle and stepping on chips. I really need to get leather soles on these. The purple heart is far more slippery. And so I'm just going to be moving my whole body and that way I can make sure I'm locking the angle in. And eventually what's gonna happen is you're gonna get good at this and your body's gonna get used to it and you can start to decouple your arms from your upper body until eventually you're just doing this. And so now this is how I sharpen because I've, I've gotten used to it, I've gotten the feel down, <laughs> but for the initial learning it's good to lock your whole body so you're moving at your legs. What questions we got? Um, hang on. Oop. Sorry, I was laughing earlier because when you said the bezel goes pop, I then thought of round and round the woodworking bench pop goes the bezel. <laughs> 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 but anyways, I have a couple questions. What's that? Let's see. Start from going on this. God and Guns asks, how are the Narex Richter chisels going? Doing? Fantastic. I am in love with these things. Um, uh, the, the only thing I have downside on them is the handles are not quite the shape I would like. And so I might be reshaping these handles or making new ones. I haven't quite forget what that is. But as to the chisel, they are phenomenal. I'm, I'm in love with these. Yes. There's links to these down below if you want to see those as well. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer some questions while I do this. But I'm going to do that exact same thing. Coarse, medium, fine. Now I've spent way too much time on the coarse. Usually my coarse is like four or five strokes, and then I move on to the, the fine. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time on the fine, clean it up, and then on the extra fine. And what I'll be doing is on the very coarse, I'll feel on the back, do I feel a burr? And now I feel a really, really big burr. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to describe it. There's, it's just a really big burr. You, you can feel it very obviously. Usually with five or six strokes, I feel the ever so slightest burr in there. I just want to make sure that I feel that burr all the way across the tip. Because if I'm just feeling it on one side or the other, that means I'm putting too much pressure on one side or the other of the chisel. And so once I get that burr on from the coarse, then I'm going to do the same thing on, the, on the, the, the fine and then the extra fine. I'm going to take it over the strop and do a few strops until I get that mirror finish I'm looking for. And then I'm going to flip it over, just pull it back flat. I'm going to go four or five times, flipping it back to front, back to front. Let me show you what this looks like. And I'm going to go through this a few other times with other methods. But I just want to show you what I generally do for my half inch. And here, let me see if I can show you this. I don't know if I can zoom in that far. No, you're not going to be able to see this. I don't know, you might be able to see it. There's like a little bit of a gleaming spot right on the tip. And that's that burr. It's just ever so slightly hanging on. If I do it a couple more times, it will fall off. There, just fell off. And so now there is no sparkly right on the tip. And that is the burr. And so now I know that's about as, as sharp as it'll humanly get. And just dragging it like that, it's catching my skin just ever so slightly tapping on it. So if I were to do the hair test, every hair this would test, every hair this would hit would be gone. That's pretty much as sharp as that can humanly get. <clears throat> so that's my method. And usually, and if there isn't a ding or a chip, it's five or six strokes, five or six strokes, five or six strokes. 
about 10 on the bevel, and then back and forth five or six times until the burr falls off. And most of the time it's like 30 to 40 seconds between working on the bench and bringing it back to work on the bench. And it's sharp and good to go. And that's my general sharpening of the chisel, anytime that it's gotten dull. If I'm working and doing some detail work, then I'm just gonna do the strop. So I'm just gonna bring over the strop and do a dozen or so strokes right on the strop, take it right back to the work. Um, oh, let me show you this. Let me see if I can do this. Give you an idea of what this looks like. So this is uh, white oak in grain. Let's see if we can do this. Just trying to catch it. There we go. Trying to get this hair curl, but the end is not perfectly flat yet. So I'm just trying to wisp to the top, not trying to dig in. I want to see if I can get this light curl all the way across, which is more of a hand control. If I dig in, then I can get whoop, my hand slicing. Because now I'm down well over a sixteenth of an inch, and that's what I'm liking right there. Happiness. So that's just playing around on the end grain there. And uh, that's what I like. Um, got that, got that, got that. Okay, the next question people are going to ask is how do you know when it's sharp or when it's dull? And I know when it's sharp, when it's dull, when it's not performing the way I want it to, or when it is performing the way I want it to. Um, I know a lot of people out there, like when I, when I explain how to test it, I will shave hairs. And a dull chisel will still shave hairs. So if you're cutting hairs, it may or may not be sharp. The way you tell it is if you very, very lightly run it across your blade, run it across, and it hits every single hair it touches, suddenly pops off like that. I've got a bald, pot, bald spot. Just ever so slightly letting it slide across the top. Every hair will disappear. And then you know it's sharp. If you slide it across and it's missing about half of them, then it's not quite sharp. If you slide it across and it's cutting a few of them at a time, it's pretty dull. If you slide um, it across and draw blood. <laughs> yeah, then you've got a hand problem. <laughs> um, so that's the way I describe what sharp is, but I don't do that. Um, I, I do it for the videos to show what sharp looks like. But for actual function, I go through this and take it right back to work. Um, and over time, you just kind of know what sharp feels like. So I can, I can slide my thumb across it really lightly and, and feel what, what sharp is. So usually the way I'm going to test it is I, I just drag my thumb lightly across it. And you can feel it catching on the, uh, the finger ridges. And you just know what sharp feels like. Um, and so that's the way I'm going to be taking it through. I don't actually shave my hairs with it every time, though it is a lot of fun. Uh, what questions do we have so far? Let's see. Um, I'm trying to go through the ones that have to do with sharpening and then go back to the ones um, that are not chisel related. So let's see. Abdullah Ahmadzai says, what chisels do you have or use? Uh, these are the Nerex Richters. Um, I recently did a chisel test where I put um, was it 16 or 17 chisels through the test. Um, it was probably the most, well, in my opinion, it's the most rigorous scientific test that has ever been done on chisels. Uh, so you want to see that video, I have a link to it. Actually, I don't have a link to it down below. Or if you do wood by right chisel test, it'll come up. Um, and these were the all around best chisel. And so from that test, I went out and bought these. Um, I was actually really, really, skeptical when I first heard about it because the big difference with the Richters are the, um, the tempering method. They're cryogenically tempered. And I thought that was kind of gimmicky, uh, but after testing, I'm like, oh, that's actually really good. I like that. So um, next, I want to show doing a big chisel like this sucker. Uh, this is an inch and a half chisel, and there's a few things that I'm going to do differently on this that I won't do on normal chisels. And I also, I sharpen this thing the exact same way that I sharpen my plane blades. And so if you imagine this being a plane blade, 
I'm going to sharpen it the exact same way. Again, I'm going to hold it again, my fingers resting underneath, bring it around, the index finger pointing forward, exactly the same. But this time, I'm going to bring over other fingers. And what I want to do, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more on this. What I want to do is I want to have fingers all the way across. So on this one, I'm going to have one, a two, maybe a third one. It's not quite enough space in there. Yeah, I'll probably just do two because I'll turn it sideways like that. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on this, except for it's going to take a little bit longer because it's a larger surface. Man, I need to get leather on these soles. This one's going to take a little bit longer because it takes more material. But now I've got a burr all the way across there. Take it over into the fine here. There we go. So do you ever, when they're so shiny, look at them and go, who is the fairest woodworker of them all? <laughs> so shiny. Is that how you know they're... <laughs> And so just like that, that was sharpening this one. Now I'm going to actually, on this one, yeah, this one I'm going to set it on here flat, and I'm just going to drag it back once. And what that did is it took this burr that was hanging over this side, and it flipped it back to now be hanging over this side on the bevel. So I'm going to take it over here to the strop, then now that burr is hanging down, so the first stroke of the strop will bend it back. And this one I need to spend a little bit of time on. I was using it outside and dropped on the concrete. And I've got a chip right in that corner. But for this sake, it won't be a problem because the chip is in the corner. I don't need the full width of the chisel. Ooh. Well, let me see if I can show you this burr. Here. There. You can see that wisp of a burr right there hanging off. It's actually a really, really big burr. Um, but a couple more strokes on the strop, and that'll disappear. There you go. So let's make that fall off. And that one's hanging on just a hair. There, it just fell off. And so now I've got that really nice edge. And so we can take it over here to the oak. We can get the same thing. Oh, I'm not showing. You get the same thing here, trying to get that controlled curl. Just trying to get those little wisps all the way across the top. Those are the hard ones to get. Yeah, love that. So that's a big chisel, and it's, it's relatively easy in comparison, but you just have to think about getting more even pressure across it. So a couple problems that will come across with this one is when you are running it on the plates is, um, especially if it's skewed, it's very easy to put more pressure on one side or the other. So you'll start to notice that the chisel starts to get skewed and you'll be taking more material off of one side or the other. The way to fix that is you put more pressure on the side you want to take more off of. So if I notice that this is getting out of square and I get an acute angle over here and an obtuse angle over here, then I put more pressure on the acute angle to try and bend that down in and whichever side you put more pressure on, you're going to take more material off that side. So after a couple sharpenings of having too much pressure on one side, then you have to switch back and put more pressure on the other side. Uh, so that's really common with plain blades and bigger, um, bigger chisels. So what question we got? All right. So good. if you answered some of these, sorry. Um, the poor man asked, what would the purpose of a back bevel be? Um, the back bevel, what happens is, on the back of the chisel, uh, well, you wouldn't really want to put a back bevel on a chisel. Um, yeah. Don't put a back bevel on a chisel. <laughs> there are a few instances where you might want to think about it, but generally, back bevels shouldn't be on chisels. And the reason being is, if ever, if you're planing this surface, and I have this back, flat down on the work. So the back is sitting flat on the work. The blade will not engage with anything because the tip is actually up off of the ground. You've actually rounded the front edge of it. So it's going to act like a sled going across the work. And so you have to lift up the handle in order for it to engage and work in. Um, so if this is perfectly flat all the way to the point, 
Now I can use this to reference and I can clean a surface flat because the point will engage where it's cutting in. Um, but on a plane blade, because the bevel isn't up, the bevel is down. Now, basically all you're doing is you're taking your, your cutting surface from 45 degrees, you're putting a secondary bevel on it, it takes off a few degrees, and so now you're actually going to be, actually adds a few degrees to it, so now you'll be cutting it like 47, 49 degrees, whatever your, your back bevel is on it. So it gives you an, actually a little bit higher angle of attack, which can be better for your, um, your delicate woods and things like that. The other thing that it does is if you have any imperfections, any scratches or nicks in the back, rather than having to flatten the whole thing, you're basically just flattening a little bit right up at the tip, so you're saving a lot of time. Um, depending upon how much of a back bevel you put on it, you may actually end up running to problems with your chip breaker, because your chip breaker might actually create a gap so that chips can now go underneath the chip breaker. Um, so. I don't do it much, but I know a lot of people out there who really like it for plane blades. There are very few instances in which you want a back bevel on a chisel. If you're always going to be using the chisel bevel down, then having a black back bevel on there really isn't going to be much of a problem, but uh, I don't always do that. Um, yeah. Oh, um, before I move on to the small ones, the next question that a lot of people are going to ask is, what angle should I sharpen my chisel to? Whatever angle you want. <laughs> um, there's always a trade-off in it. So if I make it more acute, so I take it down to like a 25 degree chisel, it's going to cut really easily, especially with ingrain, it's going to pare through that really beautifully. Um, it takes very little pressure to push a, a low angle chisel through the wood. Um, it just it feels really, really good. The problem with it is that you have a very delicate tip and that tip will chip or it will break or it will wear down and a, a low angle chisel will not last as long. You'll have to sharpen it more often. Um, so the durability isn't as good. So I could then take it up to like a 40 degree bevel. And a 40 degree bevel is gonna last you a long time. It will take almost anything to dull a 40 degree bevel. The problem with it is, is it takes a lot of force to push a 40 degree bevel into the wood. And so most people are going to fall somewhere around 30 to 35 degrees-ish. Um, Excuse me, most people are gonna fall around like 25 to 30 degrees. Um, most, of my, um, most of my carving chisels are down at like 20 degrees or 17 degrees. They're really, really low angle chisels. But I'm not gonna be putting too much, I'm not gonna be putting too much force on them. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be bashing them and cutting mortises with my carving chisels. Um, so I don't, I don't worry about the tips and how delicate they are. I'll put a really, really fine tip on them so they'll cut easily. Um, but for my bench chisels, I'm usually sharpening them somewhere around 25 to 30 degrees. What is the degree I have on this? I don't know. Bachelor's, master's. Yeah, um, <laughs> oh, I don't know my bevel finder right here. If I had to guess right now, I'd say these are about 28 degrees. Um, if I had to pick the perfect angle to put on a bench chisel, I'd probably put it right about 30. Um, but that's, that's right about where I, would, where I would like it. Are you really gonna see that much of a difference from like 25 to 30? Maybe, maybe not. If you're gonna be pounding mortises, then you'll probably see the difference. But for general bench chisel work, you're not gonna see that much wear difference between 25 and 30. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, I, it's one of those things that people ask me, what angle do you, car do, do you do sharpen it at? I don't set an angle. I just put it on there and go like, hmm, that feels good. We're gonna sharpen it there. Um, that's, that's, and the angle may change slightly over time as my arms um, go up and down and, and change things. The, the bevel angle is kind of in flux, so that's what that is. What questions we got? Okay, so, because Alan super chatted earlier, I'm gonna jump to his question, and a lot of other Thank people you, liked it. Um, when and mm -hmm. or how often do you need to clean the strop? Um, mine is probably about time to do it. I should go and show you that. Um, See how it's, it's black rather than green? I'm going to grab my card scraper, which I thought was on my bench, apparently it's not. I'll grab my card scraper, and I'm just going to scrape off most of that black, like that, and then grab my compound, which I do sell on my, my website, uh, hint, hint. Scum, scum. And you can see how that comes out really green. 
And so that's that's what I'll do. And so that's usually like for me, once a monthish. Um, so that's all I put on there until it wears out a little bit. I might put a little bit more green on there before going on any farther. But that's about all I do. So yeah. Oh, you guys didn't see it. Sorry. Yeah, this is the green, and before it was just like jet black. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I was on that camera. Um, okay, let's look at thin chisels. This is one I get the question quite a bit is, how do you sharpen tiny little chisel? Because I can't put multiple fingers up there on the tip. Okay, which camera do you think you're on? This one, why? <laughs> there's a reason I married her. Still haven't figured out what it is, but I'm sure there's a reason. Uh -huh. So um, with small chisels, it's hard because there isn't a spa enough space to get multiple fingers up in the tip. So how do I sharpen? I'm going to hold it the same way, three fingers underneath, one finger on top, and rather than putting it side by side, I'm going to back my, my pointer finger up, and I'm going to use my left finger. Now the problem with, with thin chisels is it becomes very, very easy to lean it one way or the other. Because it's so thin, you're never really thinking about putting pressure one way or the other. Most of the control now is back in your fingers. So rolling the chisel with your fingers will adjust the angle that you sharpen it at. And so if I find that I'm going out of square one way or the other, I'm going to roll the chisel a little bit more to one, one side or the other. Now this is actually a brand new chisel. I've never actually sharpened it. I've never actually used it because it's an eighth inch chisel. You just don't use it that often. So let me actually show you what the brand new Richter chisel does. And I've never put this into wood before, so I don't know how good this is. Most of them have been pretty good out of the box, but this one's pretty good. So we're not going to change it too much, but I want to show it sharpened. <laughs> So yeah, this one's brand new out of the box. I'm gonna put one finger here, one finger in here. Adjust my grip a little bit. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Now one of the things that you might want to do is if you're having a hard time keeping that angle on there, is rather than going at 45 degrees or going across, turn the sharpening plate and change your body so that now the chisel is going in line with the plate. And that makes it a little bit easier to keep that constant bevel on there, just like that. And it doesn't take much at all. Really, all I need is like one or two strokes, and I can feel the burr on the back. Um, I've already put way too much of a burr on this one. So let me take it to this. And so I'm going to look at it and see, make sure my scratch marks from the previous one have disappeared. And in this one, I'm actually noticing all of my scratch marks, I'm putting more on this side than on that side. So on this last one, I'm going to think about rolling it a little bit more to the other side. And there. Yep, now i got a good clean cut. I'm going to do the same thing on this. And with a fine blade, it doesn't take much to get rid of that burr. Get a nice crisp edge on there. Take it over here and give it a shot. Oh, it is pleasing. Happy days. Happy little wood curls. And those are tiny little wood curls. <laughs> so, um, how to get this absolutely straight is about rotating the chisel as opposed to putting pressure on one side or the other because you really can't put too much, you can't put pressure on one side or the other. So just rotating in your hand to think about that. Um, also, on any of the chisels, in between the plates, especially when you're first getting started, on your coarse plate, after you've done that, flip it up and look at it, make sure you have scratches all the way across the pattern you're looking for. Then put it on your medium plate, pick it up and make sure that your scratches have all gone in a different direction, your scratches have all changed to the new scratch pattern. And then put it on the next one and make sure that all those scratches are gone. And you'll see, um, you should see all of your coarse scratches disappearing by finer scratches. And those medium ones disappearing by even finer scratches. And then when you go on the strop, then it all disappears and you get a really nice polished mirror finish. Boy, I look good.
Um, and one other little trick that some people like and some people don't um, is the way in which you sharpen it. So what I can do is if I'm trying to make sure that I've gotten a good grit from one to the other is I'll do this one at 45 degrees and then I'm going to rotate and I'm going to do this one straight across. And that way the scratches from this will be going across at 45 degrees and the scratches from this one will be going in line with the chisel. And so I can make sure that all of my 45 degree scratches are removed by the scratches that go in line with it. And then on the last plate, I'm going to go back to 45 degrees and make sure that all my inline scratches have been removed by the ones that are going 45 on this. And then I can make, them sh make sure they disappear on the strop. So, a fun little tip there. What questions we got? Um. I think we'll just transition to questions for the last of this. Looks like we've got a few. Yeah, we got a few. Cool. So, if anyone has questions, go ahead and throw them down there. Oh, okay. Well, we got quite a few to go through. Yeah, if we so. don't get to them, then sorry. Send James a message. Yes. Or if you want to send a super chat, or that we'll answer too. those. Um, let's see. Sean O'Brien had asked, in terms of cutting mortises in oak, how frequently would you strop? Every mortise? Every three? Um, if I'm cutting mortises, I'm not going to strop. I'm going to go a little bit longer and then go and sharpen it. Um, I, I don't really worry about the edge being perfectly keen when cutting mortises. The reason being is that when you're really hitting it into a hard, dense wood like oak, it's not going to take too many hits until that edge just isn't what it used to be. Um, and so you'd end up having to strop, you know, every 30, 40, 30, 40 seconds worth of work um, to get it back to where it should be. So that's why I'll, I'll usually just let it go longer. And, you know, if I'm cutting mortises that are, let's say, uh, quarter inch by two inch by two inch deep, um, I'm probably going to do two of those and then I'll come back and sharpen again. And I'll do two of those and I'll come back and sharpen again. Um, I could probably stretch it out and go a little bit longer, but I find that to be about the worthwhile time, um, time wise product. Uh, and it, again, it really depends on your particular type of chisel. Some chisels are really durable and some are not. Um, so it's one of the things you have to look at. If you want to see um, the chisel test I did where I actually go in and compare them and, and show the durability difference between them so you can see how that will that'll come out. Um, usually I sharpen when I notice that my quality of work is going down or right before I'm going to do something really keen. Um, like I was just doing the, the finishing project, the finishing process on the, uh, the desk drawers and right before doing the final detail cleanup on using the chisel to, to smooth edges and, and clean things up, I took it over and sharpened it and brought it really nice and then, uh, and then went to town on that. But if I'm cutting mortises, I'm just gonna bash it and go to town on it so I don't worry, I don't worry about it being deadly sharp. Now, if I'm working with my carving tools, those get stropped every couple minutes. Every couple minutes, I just bring them over and strop them because those I stay, I keep perfectly keen because that crisp edge will give me a nice clean cut with a chisel. But for mortise, it really doesn't matter. So, uh, yeah. What's next? All right. So we've had several questions about the stones. Okay. Um, so Brian Fulmer had asked, for DMT stones, if you can't get them all at once, is there an order to get them that you suggest? And then we've had a couple questions about, like, maintaining. I don't know if you talked about that while you did it. But. I need to talk about um, it depends on what you have. Um, if you have fine wet stones already, then get a coarse stone. And a coarse stone is great for removing a lot of material very quickly. And usually that's the way I do it. Is I get the edge to the shape I want with the coarse stone, and then I do the medium and fine to clean it up. Um, and so it, the, the coarse stone is nice because I could use the coarse stone to then flatten my wet stones if I still have those. Um, and the coarse stone just cuts through material very, very quickly. And so usually I'm going to tell people get the coarse stone first. And I do actually have one extra coarse. When I really want to cut through material fast, I use the extra coarse. Um, but I don't bring that out for my regular sharpening because I don't need to remove that much material. Um, unless I have a chip that I'm trying to get through, then I'll bring that one out. Um, but yeah, I, I think it would depend on the, the stones that you have. Uh, but I think the the extra course, the, the course would be the most useful um, for if you already have decent whetstones. Um, as to maintenance, I get the question all the time of how do you keep them looking so clean? Um, and the reason, I think the reason why is my rag. 
Uh, this rag is actually a white rag. Yes, it is a jet white rag. And uh, I haven't washed it in four or five years. <laughs> yes, he took the white rag without my knowledge. I did. Um, and so what I do is I do my spray. I'm going to just go ahead and sharpen this the way I normally would. Burr. And there, that is a full sharpening regimen for me. Um, taking it from one to the other, that's the entire amount of time I spend sharpening a chisel. And so immediately after doing that, I'm gonna grab the rag and I'm gonna wipe it off. The reason they turn black is that the metal shavings stay on the stone and the lubricant disappears and they work into it. Um, so you have to clean them out. And so usually I'm just using a Windex to do it. Um, you can do it with water. You can actually sharpen on these without any fluid. Um, the fluid is nice in that it moves the wood, uh, the steel chips out of the way. Um, oh, one of the big, one of the big uh, confusion points between whetstones and diamond plates is whetstones actually cut with a slurry. The stone, we don't, you think of like a sandpaper with the aggregate sticking up and the metal comes across it and it removes material. That's not how whetstones work. Whetstones have a slurry that's on top and that slurry is what cuts the stone not the actual, uh, the slurry is what cuts the, the chisel, not the actual stone. And so if you don't have a slurry on top, then it won't actually cut the chisel, at least do it really nicely. And that's why wet stones can give more of a polished surface because the slurry isn't really giving a standard straight scratch pattern. Whereas with diamond stones, you do have that aggregate that's sticking up and the, the, uh, the steel comes across and it cuts the steel. And so that's what is the, there's a different function in between them. And so that's why diamond stones give you straight cut marks, even on the fine plate, whereas wet stones, you get more of a polished look because there's a slurry cut into it. Um, and so with, with diamond plates, the reason you're using a fluid is not to create the slurry. The reason you're using a fluid is to get the, the metal shavings off, off of the plate because uh, the metal shavings will just clog up the diamonds otherwise. Um, and so you don't really need this um, to create the slurry like you do in a whetstone, but it's nice to clean them up if you're going to be making a lot of a mess. And so as long as I wipe them down, chisel, 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 wipe, 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 that's my entire maintenance to them. Um, I don't really do anything other than that. So lots of fun. What's next? Um, I don't, welcome to Superstars Paper. Oh, we got a new uh, member. Ah. Thanks, Clockman. Thank you. It's like I have Yeah, seen for that. those of you who know, we just opened up the uh, the membership here on Wood by Right 2. Uh, so if you do that now, your name will have the the member logo on you. Um, uh, so if if people are members on Wood by Right 1 and they want to switch to Wood by Right 2, go ahead and drop Wood by Right 1 and come over to Wood by Right 2 cuz most of the lives are done over here and so we get the extra bells and whistles with the uh, the lives. So there are uh, emojis and things like that like chisels and, and uh, planes that you can put in emojis into your your chat <laughs> <laughs> i've been waiting for them to open up the uh the membership here on the second channel so we can do that so now it's up and running all righty um okay we talked about maintaining i'm just trying to find like themes of questions i've ah. seen so at this point we can just go down through and list okay um, Harold Golden had asked, do you recommend using a felt tip marker to cover the bevel to show where you are making contact? Um, I have, uh, I've done that in the past when, yes and no. Um, it is, well, what I'll say is you, you take the marker and you put a marker on the bevel and then you sharpen it, you will see where the, the, the bevel is, is cutting. Um, but if you're doing that on a fine stone, um, the fine stone can actually hit the marker that's sitting on top of the steel without hitting the steel. And so in some of those cases, you're actually going to be removing the marker and still not hitting the steel. Um, and so it is a good identifier, but I find the, the best way to teach is showing the scratch marks on it and getting to know and being able to see the scratch pattern and seeing that the next stone takes off the existing scratch, scratch pattern and all the way across that. 
And once you get to identify the scratch pattern, then it becomes much, much easier to see it each individual time and between each plate. But that being said, um, a marker on there um, does tell you really quickly and easily, yes, I hit it all, or no, I still need to hit that spot. So in the end, it's a personal preference. What's next? They're saying that um, new memberships we, we have with Clockman45, Sean O'Brien, and Aaron Fenn are all new members. Woo-hoo! So um, they Thanks, said it guys. deserves a mom joke. Yes, I do think it deserves a few. Are you ready? Oh, and Tom, thank you. Oh, and Tom. Okay. So, why was Pavlov's hair so soft? Uh, I should know this one. Why? Because he conditioned it. <laughs> that yes. that's a mom joke right there. That's a mom I joke. I collect jokes during the week. <laughs> I know you do. Uh ready? Yep. Mr. Q asked, are there benefits to having a super polished backside of the chisel? Uh yes and no. Um I don't actually spend much time polishing my backside. (laughs) (laughs) I should really think through things before I say them. (laughs) Smoother than a Uh, baby's bottom. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) What? Wow, I lost that one, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, the the thing with the, the back is you want it to be clean. If there are any chips in the back or if there are any scratches in the back, then when your bevel gets to that point, those chips and scratches are now in the tip. Um, So you do want it to be clean. Does it need to be mirror polished? (coughs) Personal preference in the end. Um, But with the way I sharpen, um, so at the end, you know, I'm gonna come over here too. Um, So when I come over to the strop then, I mean, you know, I'm going to do a few strokes on the bevel, and then I'll flip it over and do the back, and the bevel, and the back. And because I never sharpen the back, every time I, every time I sharpen the bevel, I'm going to give it a, a half dozen to a dozen strokes on the back. And so over time, I start polishing this, and I end up with a really nice polished finish because the only thing that touches the back of the chisel <laughs> is my strop. And uh, I get a nice, clean surface from that. So do, I, do you need to polish it? No. But as long as you sharpen it this way, you're going to be polishing it eventually. I'm sorry. No, I still lost my wife on that one. As smooth as James Wright's backside. I'm sorry, I'm in tears. The comments are so funny. Is that where the chisel test is really done? Thanks, Tom. <laughs> oh. Fine joinery. Oh. Flatulent joinery. <laughs> Talk about derailing the comments. <laughs> What's next? I'm sorry. I can't focus. <laughs> Did you answer the question of how often you sharpen already so far tonight? Um, yeah. I sharpen okay. when I need to sharpen. Um, let's see. Caleb Neb asks, do you ever offer the chisel to the grinder or use a jig to reset the angle? Do I ever offer the chisel to the grain? The grinder. No, no, I, I don't ever take my chisel back to the grinder. Um, I, if I find that my bevel is getting too steep or too fine, then I just adjust the angle um, with the next sharpening. And so that's the way. I, I generally find that over time, my hand starts to drop and I get a finer and finer angle. And when I notice that, then I just pick it up and hit the tip again and then I get a secondary bevel for a little while. Um, and that... Uh, that fix it up pretty well. But no, I never never take it back to the grinder. Um, yeah, I kind of have a pet peeve with grinders because they take off a lot of material and they have a very easy t- tendency to overheat the chisel and ruin the temper. Um, especially with these Narex chisels where the whole thing behind them is that temper. I ain't going to mess around with that at all. Um, I don't heat them up at all in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah. Um, What's next? Okay, I'm sorry. Fanny Masquith asked, on a, pl- on a plain blade, would you try to round the corners a bit? Um, I don't do that. Um, I know Paul Sellers really likes to do that on, the, on a plain blade. He'll just do the, the opposite, the corner at the very end, um, and particularly for a smoothing plane. Um, 
the smoothing plane is the only one where I'd think about doing it. Um, all other planes, yeah. Uh, but I still don't even do that on my smoothing plane because as long as you're taking a fine enough shaving, you're never going to see the We're about track. to be invaded. Uh-oh, here's a kid. What's up, Mel? What up, Melanie? Um, I've been in a call with you. You just wanted to ask, do I have to go to bed now? Yeah. Yeah, it's and Mel. Just go up the stairs. I'll be up there the same. Okay. Okay, what's next? Go. Love you. <laughs> Got time for one or two more? Well, we have a four-year-old who has a question, so we must ask. Oh, okay, -year -old. what's the question? So, Henry, are you listening? Son of William Lewis. He wants to know, how many chisels do you have? <laughs> um, hey, do we count carving chisels? Let's see, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I have 15 chisels here that are my daily use chisels. And then I probably have another 25 or 30 over there from tests and previous uses. And then I've got over 40 carving chisels. So I've got a lot of them. Although, there are a lot of people out there who have way more than that. Do you have a buttload? <laughs> Boy, this is going to the wrong end, isn't it? Sorry. Well, I've lost my assistant for the night. And I'm sorry if your four-year-old shouldn't have heard that. <laughs> Well, let me end it with, a, with one of my favorite jokes of all time. Okay, end it with a joke. I like that idea. It's 9 o'clock. How do you get out of an elephant? How do you get out of an elephant? You run around and 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 around until you get pooped out. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, welcome to Wood Right, Right, and until next time, have a wonderful day. <laughs> oh, i got to click the button. Hang on. If I didn't get to your questions, go ahead and send me a message, and I'll try and answer those there. Bye. Until next time. Bye.